Congratulations on a great performance. Um, you'd mentioned that you'd trained with her in the past. So did that fight play out kind of how you suspected it would based on your training experiences? Um, somewhat. Um, I was, when I trained with her, I knew her clinch was strong. I knew she was, you know, just a strong a girl. I knew that she trained hard. She's she's kind of got that grind and that grit in her, so I figured that would be there. Um, I wanted to stand up a little more, but the fact that she was grabbing on so much, I thought, well, let's just go with it then and, and just do some wrestling and uh, kind of take it from here then. You got her in a crucifix in a second, I think. It looked like you even got in a rear naked choke at one point. Were you sort of chasing the finish? Did you think it was close or were you just sort of, I'm taking my time and what happens, happens? I wish I would have taken a little more time to get a, a little more secure position in the crucifix because I think that you know that could have been the end of the fight if I would have kind of solidified a little more solid position before I let the strikes go. Um, and as far as the rear naked, um, I could have sat there and focused on it a little more, but I also uh, was controlling on top that sometimes I don't want to just chase something so much and then lose lose a good position. So that's why I let go of it. Yeah. Um, after the fight, you didn't call out any names, but there are, like, I think only two people ranked above you at this point. So is it sort of, you know, the title or bust? I'll wait for an opportunity or I'll just keep fighting until I get a title shot? I guess we'll just see whatever they come come up with. Um, yeah, I definitely feel there's there's not many above me. I've fought Raquel Pennington twice, so sometimes that doesn't make sense. However, if that's the, the fight again, then, you know, but other than that, it, yeah, it's like Pena or the championship, I guess. But... Um, you never know. Things things change so much, and you never know. What I just want to keep getting better in the gym, and whatever they whatever they present is what's going to be. Yeah, and last one for me. You used your post fight speech to use a platform, I believe, to um, sort of speak out against the sexualization of children. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you wanted to use your platform again now to sort of go into further detail. You know, there there's a lot of things I don't ever want to be. Uh, I'm not like a r real political person. I don't like to put that stuff on, on any of my social media or because I think there's just, but there's also just right and wrong. And I feel like everybody should be on the, the same side on that. I don't feel like that has anything to do with left side, right side or anything like that. I feel like everybody should be wanting to protect our children. And it, and there there's, there's stuff that is, there's a lot of child trafficking. And I mean, that's like the extreme part, but it, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of levels to it. Um, you just see it almost being more accepted, and I think that that's really sad. Um, so I just feel like we should all do what we can. I know it's like a lot of people don't even know what to do, but if I can at least have a voice on it, then that's something I can speak out on it. And it's just to get everybody together to, to protect children. It's, uh, childhood is really affects people in their in their long term life too. I mean, um, I, I have I have friends that are adults and their biggest thing that kind of is a shadow, kind of that dark space in them is being sexualized when they were young. And I just feel like it's almost getting um, accepted. Holly, um, when would you like to return? Like if you could map out the rest of 2023, what would it look like? You know, I'm, I'm healthy right now. I didn't get any injuries in the fight, um, so. I mean, it's always nice to not, it, it's more of a mental break to not have a fight scheduled. Um, but I'm sure in two weeks I'll be bored and be like, what's my purpose? <laughs> you know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't really have like a set timeline, but, um, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And, and you're fighting now in, into your 40s and you're obviously in phenomenal shape. Your performances are great. Um, but but how would you describe sort of this chapter of your career? How do you feel physically in terms of like prime? Do you feel like there's a lot more to give? There's different levels that you, that you can achieve? Do you feel like we've yet to see uh, the best of Holly Holm? I do feel that. I, um, there's there's the recovery that takes a little more. You know, I, if I really look back on what's different now at 41 than at 31, it's just... I have to actually schedule in my recovery uh, in between my trainings, but I'm able to do it. I have the time to do it. Um, I'm definitely more careful <laughs> when I train. I want to train hard, but I also, I also want to make sure I'm not getting injured in training and things like that. Um, but I do feel like I'm still evolving. I feel like I'm still learning, and I want to use a little bit of what what I was doing great before and add it on with things that I've learned and just keep keep putting it all together, you know. Um, 
at first it was like watch out for her boxing then it was watch out for her kicks and then it was like watch out for her clinch and now they're like well her wrestling's getting there too and you know I, I'm always working on something and I want to be able to really just be able to put it all together um, and I still feel like I have that all in me. Yeah. And we've seen you grapple a lot in, in recent years. Um, do you enjoy it more than the boxing or would you rather box? I mean, your opponents always see, look to grapple you. <laughs> I actually, I still, I think my love will always be striking, you know, but I do have a new found love uh, with kind of just the grind and the wrestling aspect of it and, and grappling, you know, it's like things that when I first started, um, I think the more you learn with anything, you obviously enjoy it the more you know it. And when you're first learning, you know, any kind of grappling or jujitsu, it's like, I don't even know what to do. And then when you start learning how to pass and how to, you know, do what you want to do and impose your will on someone, it gets more fun. So, um, but still in my heart, striking's always uh, what I enjoy yeah. the most. Yeah, and, and going into this fight, the big news was that you signed a new deal with the UFC, six fights. Um, do you think this is the last deal you signed with the UFC? Meaning, like, do you think we'll see the rest of your career play out within these six fights? That's very possible. Um, I don't ever really like to put a timeline on myself, but I definitely know that I'm not 25 or 30 anymore. Uh, I still feel very healthy right now, but six fights is still quite a bit of time. So, yeah, um, I definitely know that, you know, retirement is sooner than it was 10 years ago, but, but I'm not ready to do it right yet. So Yeah, for sure. And, and you fought so many people in the division, and your longevity is, is quite impressive. Is there any names that, besides the belt, is there any names that you would like to come across and, and fight? Is there, is there any of that? Well, I've never called anybody out. I always just want to be ready for anyone. Um, I think sometimes if you get so focused on one person, you know, that maybe you're not, you don't get excited for if it's a different type of fight. You know, I, I just want to be ready for anybody. Um, so we'll see what happens. Thank you. Holly, over here. Uh, to make a quick analogy, so later in his career, Michael Jordan added the turnaround jumper as his bread and butter. For you later in your career, after the grappling display you've been putting on, <laughs> is that something that might be your bread and butter as we, uh, we kind of progress into the later part of your career? Yeah, you never know. Um, if there's a few things, there's, there are a few things that I don't have on my record yet. I don't have a stoppage from just like the ref having to stop me from, you know, ground and pound or a submission. I still got those out there. I mean, I'm always liking the knockouts, and I always like the technical knockouts, all that kind of stuff. But I still feel like there's unfinished business, so. And with it being Women's History Month this month, I would just like to know, I don't know if you ever get a chance to reflect on your career, but how does it feel knowing that you are not only, you know, a boxing Hall of Famer, but you will be a first ballot UFC Hall of Famer and all that good stuff? I take, um, I'm very humble, and I feel a lot of, support and I'm super blessed to be able to be a female and be an athlete. Um, I feel proud to be a female and to be an athlete and um, I, I'm proud to be a woman. Uh, I love being a woman and I'm a competitive woman. Um, you know, I feel like um, I want to always use my platform to try and be positive to people and to other women, not just women, everyone, but um, to other women too, you know, I feel like sometimes people can feel like maybe what they're supposed to do is maybe like on this certain path. And I feel like my book is different than anybody else's. And this is what my path has been. You know, I did 10 years of boxing and now I'm doing, I'm, I've done a decade of martial arts and, you know, 10 years ago, people thought I should have retired then. So, um, I don't know. I just feel, I feel like I'm, I'm on my own journey and I'm thankful that I have a team that supports that, you know, and isn't trying to I feel like if people don't support you really, or think that you should retire too, that um, it makes you feel weak, you know, and I'm just glad that I have a strong team. That's like, yeah, we can do it. And they truly believe in me. Um, but I'm proud to be a woman and do what I do and be writing my own book. Thank you. Hi, Holly. Uh, would you like to share a card of John Jones in the summer? I believe he's wanting to fight an international fight week in, ju in July. Does that sound good? You know, I, I, I think I'm just ready for whatever, you know. I think I always love to be on, on a big card. Um, so I definitely uh, I welcome any kind of exciting card like that. I just uh, I try not to put anything too much in my head. I want to just wait and see. Um, whatever opportunity the UFC presents.
Can you recall the, the best backflip you've ever done inside the cage? <laughs> um, I mean, they all mean victory, so it's just... Uh, I'll tell you the story of my first backflip, though. I got knocked out, and it was the first time I ever had a loss like that. And I was coming back for a fight, and I was super nervous. My coach, Mike Winklejohn, he was like... Everybody does like back handspring stuff, which now we see a lot more stuff in MMA. People are backflipping all over the cage. At the time, though, <laughs> I was just doing it in boxing. You don't really see people doing that a lot. And he's like, can you do a backflip? And I was like, after 10 rounds, I don't know. I'm not like a standing backflip person, but I can always do it off your hands. So we practiced it one time at the gym after hitting mitts. And then after the fight, he was like, oh, you want to do it? I was like, oh, yeah, let's do the backflip. He's like, Here, if you win, we're going to do it. And so then it just it, it became a thing. So um, that maybe you know, that to me was just... It was a moment that helped me get past, like, um, being so nervous to get back in there and kind of put a different kind of mindset um, on something. I don't know. It was just, like, an exciting thing to do and get that victory. So it's always meant something, um, and every victory is great. But uh, I don't know. I guess they're all they – all, I have, like, different stories for each one. So. Mm -hmm. And how do you plan on celebrating uh, this victory? I'm actually going to go meet with, I have a lot of family here that I don't get to see much and a lot of friends that are here and I get to go embrace them and just celebrate together. Awesome. Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Holly, um, Donald Cerrone got inducted in, or it was announced that he's going to be inducted into the USC Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know if you have any any thoughts on that? Yeah, I actually saw him here, and I I had no idea. And congratulations to him. Um, I think that's, I mean, I think that's any fighters, especially when you're, you know, at the, you know, he's retired. I think that's anybody's uh, want to be inducted. I mean, that's that's a huge honor. So um, I hope to join that someday. Dana said you would be. Oh, awesome. <coughs> well, I'll wait till that time comes. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Thank you.